Extracurricular begins by showing a male high school student named Jisoo who is doing counseling with a male teacher named Cho Jinwoo in the teacher's office. From Mr. Cho's explanation, it is known that Jisoo is a brilliant child because he always gets the first rank in every class and rarely makes mistakes at all. However, Jisoo is a fairly quiet child and rarely socializes with other students, so Mr. Cho is concerned about his social life. Therefore, Mr. Cho, his homeroom teacher, advises him to learn to socialize and be closer to other students. Moreover, he just found out that Jisoo had been living alone since his parents left him, so he had to work to pay for all his living expenses and school fees. Without anyone realizing it, behind Jisoo's genius and innocent look, he hides his true identity. He is a pimp who prostitutes young high school girls for philanderers for a pretty high fee. Through an anonymous app, he hires a male guard to ensure the safety of prostitute girls from various troubled clients. Jisoo always carries a headset and a special cell phone to run the illegal business so that he can always communicate with the male guard. He has raised a sizable amount of money from this business to live comfortably and freely until he is old. He continues to work hard to raise up to 90 million won to achieve his dreams and keep his business running smoothly. But one day, a problem began to occur where one of the girls who worked as a prostitute was tortured by a psychopathic client. After that girl pressed the emergency button attached to her bracelet, Jisoo contacted the guard man named Lee to save her. After Lee arrived in the room and rescued the prostitute girl, he demanded a large amount of compensation from the client for all their losses. After their missions or jobs were completed, Jisoo always sent payments to Lee through the subway station lockers. It was an opportunity that he deliberately created so that Lee and the prostitute girl would not know who his true identity was. That means they didn't even know who their boss was all along. At his school, Jisoo often pays attention to one of the female students named Baegyori secretly. She is one of the most popular female students at school and is known as a tough student who is close to the students of the judo club. But coincidentally, he finally gets to interact with her after Mr. Cho asks him to join a social club where the only member in the club is Giori. That day, Giori invites Jisoo to meet at a cafe to discuss the club assignment given by Mr. Cho. Jisoo, who is actually interested in her, looks awkward in front of her and can't make direct eye contact with her. At the meeting, they try to get to know each other, and he tells her that he is currently living alone without the support of his parents. The awkward atmosphere between them slowly melts after Jisoo realizes that Giori is a cute and fun girl. In the middle of the meeting, he suddenly gets news that one of the prostitute girls named Su Min Hae is being held captive by a client. He contacted Lee to save Min Hae, but because Lee's cell phone was being repaired, he had trouble contacting Lee. He has no choice but to go to the apartment where Min Hae is being held and save her by himself. Fortunately, with his genius and careful strategy, Jisoo could safely help Min Hae escape the apartment. After the problem was over, he just remembered that he had left the cafe without giving Giori an explanation. After arriving back at the cafe, Giori turned out to have left the cafe and left his bag with the cafe waiter. On the other hand, Giori seems frustrated with her life. Even though she was born in a rich and affluent family, she felt pressured by her parents, who always demanded her to be perfect so that she could replace her father to lead the company in the future. Due to the pressure, Giori holds a big grudge against her parents and often imagines killing her own parents because her desire to get rid of them is very big. Therefore, after she discovered that Jisoo could survive without his parents, she became interested in his life. After watching Jisoo for a while, Giori suspects him and assumes he is hiding something big on his cell phone. That's why she secretly took Jisoo's business phone and tried to find out his password. While pretending to ask his contact to be included in the social club group chat, Giori secretly observes the password that Jisoo entered on his personal cell phone because she is sure he has the same password for his business phone. After successfully unlocking Jisoo's cell phone, Giori looks surprised after she finds out about the illegal business that he has been doing all this time. That night, when Jisoo was about to send the money for Lee to the station locker, he just realized that his cell phone used for illegal business had disappeared. He panicked and started looking for the cell phone in various places, including checking Min Hae's pocket, who was celebrating her boyfriend's birthday, Kitai. Kitai, who was angry that Jisoo had ruined his party, intended to beat him. But not long after that, Jisoo's father appeared and stopped their fight. After his father appears, he gets more and more frustrated because he knows that his father only comes to him when his father needs money. On the other hand, Min Hae seems to have trauma problems due to the confinement incident she experienced some time ago. The trauma makes her experience strange hallucinations where she often sees her client similar to the naughty client who once held her captive. Therefore, she contacted Lee and asked him to meet her at a restaurant to talk about it. Unbeknownst to Lee and Min Hae, Giori finds out about their conversation and secretly waits inside the restaurant to find out who the person who has worked for Jisoo has been all along. After seeing them, 
Yuri looks surprised to see her classmate involved in such illegal work. The next day, Jisoo is not coming to school without giving a clear explanation to the homeroom teacher. Knowing this, Yuri decides to visit his apartment and see if he is really a pimp. She secretly calls him and says she will return his phone in front of the school. Jisoo, who still doesn't know that the person who stole his cell phone is Gyuri, immediately goes to school to take the cell phone. After he leaves, Gyuri uses the opportunity to search Jisoo's apartment and look for evidence about his illegal business. When she opened the suitcase, she found enough money that she automatically took some money out of the suitcase before she finally went into hiding. At the same time, Jisoo's father comes to Jisoo's apartment and finds the suitcase that was previously opened by Gyuri. Greedy, he took all of Jisoo's money from the suitcase and took the money away. Yuri, knowing this, tries to stop him because she knows that Jisoo has worked hard to collect all the money, and she feels angry with Jisoo's father who is so outrageous. On the way, Jisoo saw his father, who had brought all his money in a transparent bag. When he saw Yuri chasing his father, he realized that the person who had been stealing his cell phone was her. Jisoo immediately ran to grab his cell phone from Yuri's hands, but after he approached her, she slammed him to the ground instead. After all the misfortune he's been through, he feels distraught but can't do anything anymore. From that day on, he started to temporarily disable his illegal business until he could raise enough money to start his business again. A few days later, Gyuri goes to Jisoo to offer him a deal. She admits that she will return the phone if he is willing to invite her to join the business. Hearing this, Jisoo, annoyed with Gyuri, rejected the offer and said that this kind of business is not an easy thing. The next day, Jisoo contacted his father and found out where his father was. He immediately went to his father's place to retrieve the money that his father had stolen. Yuri, knowing that Jisoo is going to his father's place, decides to follow him so she can at least help him get his money back. Unfortunately, even though Jisoo has managed to find his father, all of his money has disappeared because his father invested all of it in a fake crypto site. Knowing this, he felt very angry and sad because all the effort and hard work he had done so far ended in vain. Yuri, who feels guilty for him, decides to return his business phone to him. A few days after Jisoo got his cell phone back, he started looking for ways to continue his illegal business because he had to pay his tuition and tuition bills for the new semester. The next day, Jisoo starts doing part-time work to raise some money to pay for all the expenses he has to bear. But all of that is not easy because he needs a long time to collect enough money with his current salary. One day, Gyuri comes to see Jisoo and asks him if she is allowed to join the illegal business. She even persuades him by offering him some savings so she can help him get on with the business again but he still insists on rejecting her offer because he doesn't like her reckless and careless attitude. A few days later, Jisoo is called by Mr. Cho because his grades this semester have started to drop drastically, so his chances of getting a scholarship to enter college can be jeopardized. He feels frustrated with the increasingly complicated situation, so in the end, he decides to accept Gyori's offer and her aid money. A few days after Jisoo received financial assistance from Gyori, he began to continue his illegal business as before, although this time, he had to run the business with her, and the profits from this business had to be shared with her. After becoming a part of this pimping business, she forces him to start hiring male prostitutes from several youths at their school's judo club. Yuri did have connections and had known most of the school's judo club members for a long time, so she could easily persuade them. But Jisoo refuses her suggestion because from the beginning, he started this business to provide security for comfort girls with very high fees. He thinks male prostitutes don't need security services and can already protect themselves. A few weeks after his business was back running, Jisoo started looking for ways so that the money from this business was not entirely taken by Gyori. He began to manipulate the amount of payment they received so that he could get a bigger profit. But it turns out that she starts to suspect his plans, so she decides to take her part directly at the underground station locker. The next day, Jisoo decides to hide his money from the illegal business at the school because he plans to find a new place to hide his money. On the other hand, Kitai, who bullies Jisoo, devises a plan to get him into trouble with his friend. They agree to put pornographic objects in Jisoo's school bag and report it to the school so that he gets punished by school. That day, Kitai started carrying out his plan, where he tried to distract Jisoo in the toilet while his friend put porn in Jisoo's bag. Then when class starts, the teacher who previously received a report from one of Kitai's friends comes to the class and intends to search for that thing. Jisoo and Gyori, who heard this, were very surprised because he kept the money from their illegal business in his bag. When it's his turn, Jisoo says that the teacher shouldn't search the students' bags because it violates their privacy. But all of his words were ignored, and the teacher insisted on searching his bag. Fortunately, just as the teacher was about to open Jisoo's bag, the fire alarm went on. So the teacher immediately went to the office to check the real situation. 
After the teachers discovered that the fire alarm was a false alarm that was deliberately set by Giri, the teachers called her and interrogated her. When the teacher was asked why Giri did all that, she made an alibi by saying that she did it because she felt sad and wanted to attract the teacher's attention. After the problem was resolved, Giri advised Jisoo to stash the money under the sofa in the social club room because no other student had ever come there. The next night, Giri finds a suitable young man to be a male prostitute in Jisoo's business network. She met a young man named Fon who was having a difficult time because his management in the entertainment sector corrupted all the money from his music show. Hearing this, she offers him to work with her in the prostitution industry with the lure of fantastic pay. And just as Giri had expected, Fon was willing to join the dark business and work as a male prostitute. The next day, a policewoman named Lee Hae Kyung suddenly comes to school and interrogates Min Hae. It happened because a few days earlier, the police found footage of a high school girl who looked like her who entered the hotel with suspicious movements. So, the police interrogate Min Hae to confirm whether the girl on the CCTV footage is her. Min Hae looks shocked and confused because the girl on CCTV was indeed a recording when she met a client a few weeks ago. Iori and Jisoo, knowing she is in danger, try to help her so that the police don't know that Min Hae is the girl on the CCTV. It will be worse if Min Hae is caught committing illegal prostitution, their identities and all their illegal business will be exposed. Jisoo tells Hae Kyung that what she did at that time was an invasion of privacy, and he directed Min Hae not to say anything. As a result, Min Hae, who was confused, obeyed his words and did not reveal anything to Hae Kyung. Even though Hae Kyung failed to get a confession from Min Hae, she still suspects that the girl on CCTV is her. That night, Giori asks Jisoo to fire Min Hae from their business network so that their identities are not exposed, and their illegal business can continue to run smoothly. Although he initially objected to firing Min Hae, he finally contacted her and fired her because the current situation had become more complicated. After Min Hae got the news that she was fired, she became frustrated and angry because this was the only job that could easily make her earn a lot of money. After firing Min Hae, Jisoo secretly always pays attention to her because he fears she will leak his identity to the police. Kitai, who discovers that Jisoo keeps staring at Min Hae secretly, gets jealous and starts beating him. Luckily, Giri arrives and stops their fight before the problem gets bigger. Then, although Min Hae has not realized that Jisoo is a pimp in the prostitution business she has been in all this time, she knows that he has known what she was doing all this time. Therefore, she invites Jisoo to meet Lee at a restaurant to ask for severance pay so that she can pay Jisoo to keep his mouth shut and not talk about her secret to anyone. On the other hand, Fawn visiting the client's place to do his first job, suddenly got into trouble because the client who contacted him was a gangster named Ryu. Ryu intends to kill him because he thinks that Fawn is a male prostitute who previously had an affair with his girlfriend. Before beating Fawn, Ryu forces him to tell who the pimp or his real boss is because Ryu intends to kill the person who has provided the male prostitute service. He tells Ryu that the boss he knows so far is Lee because Lee is the one who always pays him. Soon after, Lee, Min Hae, and Jisoo left the restaurant, they were suddenly confronted by some of Ryu's men. Lee immediately asks Jisoo to take Min Hae away from the place while he tries to fight all the thugs. Jisoo quickly took her to hide in a car, so he could help Lee beat up the thugs. Unfortunately, due to too many Ryu's men, he manages to catch Jisoo and realizes that he is the real pimp. Min Hae, who felt scared, chose to contact the police so that Lee would not be killed by Ryu's gang. As a result, the police officer, Hae Kyung, becomes increasingly suspicious of Min Hae and questions Lee's involvement in this incident. After the incident, Min Hae was in deep shock and traumatized, so she could only remain silent without explaining anything to the police. Meanwhile, Ryu, who managed to catch Jisoo, intends to finish off and kill him. But when Ryu's girlfriend says that she didn't recognize Jisoo and says that he isn't her boss, Ryu stops his action. Ryu then forces Jisoo to tell the real boss or pimp, so he has no choice but to contact Giori. After finding out that Jisoo has been held captive, she buys time by saying that she will cooperate with Ryu in this illegal business and share the profits from this business with him. And as Giori suspected, Ryu accepted the offer, and Jisoo's life was temporarily saved. The next night when Jisoo was released and returned home, he protested Giori's decision. He thinks cooperating with a gang of gangsters is hazardous, and they could be killed in a time. However, she assures him that this is the only way for their business to run because all of his workers suddenly go out of business. On the other hand, Min Hae, who is no longer strong enough to carry this burden alone, finally admits to Kitai that she has been working as a prostitute. Unexpectedly, he was not surprised by that and told her he was in a relationship just to take advantage of her. Hearing this, Min Hae felt very disappointed and sad because it turned out that his boyfriend's love had not been sincere. She felt that she had no one else, then she went to see Lee, who was still lying in a coma in the hospital. 
she felt safe and more comfortable beside him because he was the only person who listened to her all this time. On the other hand, the police officer, Hei Kiyun, starts to suspect Lee's involvement with Min Hei, so she concludes that Min Hei is a prostitute worker and Lee is a guard in the business. The police task is to find out who is the boss or pimp in this business. Jisoo and Giori, who overheard Hei Kiyun's conversation through the phone they had tapped, became very anxious. He starts to fear that this illegal business will be exposed by the police and he will be expelled from school. Yuri, who feels guilty, promises him that she will handle all these problems alone. The next day, Jisoo visits Lee, who is still lying weak in the hospital, because he feels guilty for making Lee seriously injured. On that occasion, Jisoo also met with Min Hae in front of the hospital and chatted. She then asks him for advice on what she should do in such a situation. He advises her not to divulge this case to the police because she could have been killed by a pimp from the business. Meanwhile, Kitai is actually in love with Min Hae. Because of that, he secretly begins investigating the person who has been selling her all this time. He likes her but deliberately lies to her by saying he only uses her. Then he asks his friend to help find the pimp who has been destroying Min Hae's life. On the other hand, Jisoo is meeting with Ryu and his girlfriend, Min Jung, to discuss their business cooperation. During the meeting, Jisoo lied by saying that his boss couldn't come to the meeting. In fact, Giori was in their room and pretended to be attacking the waiters. Ryu confesses that he doesn't mind it because he has planned something to find his boss. Unbeknownst to Jisoo, Ryu and Min Jun have installed a bug in the money bag that his boss had previously asked for. After that, Ryu asked Jisoo to drop out of school so that he could focus more on running the business. Ryu even threatens to kill him if he is unwilling to do that. After the meeting, Jisoo could only cry and blame Giori for her decision to invite Ryu to work together in this business. He even hands all the money from Ryu to her because he doesn't want to leave school and wants to continue to live a normal life. Yori, who feels guilty for Jisoo, decides to keep Ryu's money at school and starts making plans to free him from Ryu. That night, Giori meets Ryu alone to negotiate, so Jisoo doesn't have to leave school. However, he kidnaps Giori and threatens Jisoo to surrender himself, or her life will be in danger. Hearing this, Jisoo had no other choice and could only surrender when he was caught away by Ryu's men. Fortunately, Jisoo was able to find a chance to fight Ryu's men and use their car to go save Giori. After he crashes into the car driven by Ryu and Min Jung, Giori immediately stabs Ryu's body so he can't chase them. Afterward, Giori and Jisoo stayed at a hotel to rest and make their next plan. Meanwhile, with Min Hei's help, Lee decides to run away from the hospital to the house of one of his old friends. The next morning, Giori gets the idea to frame Ryu and trap him as a pimp so they can escape all this trouble. Giori then tells Kitai that the person who has been selling Min Hei all this time is the owner of a karaoke called Club Banana which is none other than Ryu. Afterward, Giori infiltrated Ryu's karaoke place to put their business phones at his place. Unfortunately, when she was about to leave his room, Ryu, who suddenly appeared, locked her and intended to kill her. Fortunately, Kitai and his friends arrived before he could hurt her and started attacking all of Ryu's men. On the other hand, Lee, who is still recovering, intends to come to Ryu's place and kill him so that all these problems can be resolved. Hearing this, Min Hei tried to stop him because it was very dangerous, and he was still not fully healed. The next morning when Min Hei realized that Lee had gone to Ryu's place, she called the police to save him. On the other hand, after Lee arrived and beat all of Ryu's men, he immediately rushed to find Ryu. When he finds Ryu's whereabouts, it turns out that Jisoo and Giori have been successfully held captive by Ryu. Lee, who felt angry, beat Ryu and asked Jisoo to take Giori away from that place. The battle between them was so fierce that they were badly injured. Ryu initially thought he would beat Lee and kill him that day. Still, it turns out that Lee can last long enough. Lee, who was very angry with all the troubles caused by Ryu, began to lose control, and he immediately stabbed Ryu repeatedly until he died. Unfortunately, even though he managed to beat Ryu, Lee, who was already injured, started to limp and lost a lot of blood, so he also died. Meanwhile, after receiving a call from Min Hei, the police come to Ryu's place to arrest Kitai and his friends. When Hei Kyung asks why he attacked Ryu's place, he confesses that he attacked Ryu because Ryu was the one who sold Min Hei. Hearing that, Hei Kyun looks surprised because the answers to prostitution cases are too easy to solve, as if someone deliberately gave them that answer. On the other hand, Giori and Jisoo destroy their old cell phones so that their whereabouts are not tracked by the police. She advises him to go abroad and live a new life in another country with a new identity. The next day, Giori threatens her parents to give up some money, or she will reveal that Fawn, an artist from her father's company, has practiced prostitution. Her parents have no choice but to give her the money she asked for because they don't want the Fawn scandal to destroy their entertainment company. The next night, Giori meets Jisoo and invites him to flee the country together. After all that had happened, 
they decided to escape to another place and keep the story to themselves. The moral that can be learned from this movie is, if we want to get something very big in a very instant, we have to sacrifice many things and take many risks.